Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video, I'm going to go through some worked examples on how to use your calculator effectively. Specifically, we're going to look at rounding your answers to 1 and 2 decimal places and also using the times 10 to the x or the exp button. And remember that depends on which calculator you have as to which button you're going to use. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my other video covering the theory on how to use your calculator effectively and that way you'll be able to apply your knowledge of that video to this one to try the examples. One other thing I'll mention just before we get going is that you'll probably get the best out of this video if you try the examples yourself. So feel free to pause the video before I show you the answers to each question and you can try them yourselves and then you can check your answers with mine. So the first set of examples we're going to look at is rounding your answers. Okay, so question one says calculate the following rounding your answers to one decimal place. So if we do two divided by 18 in your calculator, you should get 0.1 recurring, but remember in National 5 Physics we don't do recurring symbols and we also need to round our answers. So rounding this to one decimal place will give us 0.1 as our answer. Part B says 40 divided by 82, so if we do that in our calculator, you'll get 0.4878 and so on. And so rounding that to one decimal place, we should get 0.5. Part C, 23.59 squared, if you do that in your calculator, we should get 556.4881, but rounding that to one decimal place will give us 556.5. Part D says 6.25 times 4.21, so putting that into your calculator, you should get 26.3125, and rounding that to one decimal place will give us 26.3. And lastly, part E says 2.76 times 11.3, so if we put that into our calculator, you should get 31.188, which rounding to one decimal place will give us 31.2. Hopefully nice and straightforward. Question two this time says to calculate the following, rounding your answers to two decimal places. So we're looking at two decimal places rather than one this time. So part A says 45.76 times 0 0.25. If we put that into our calculator, you should get 11.44, and that just spits it out as 11.44 in your calculator anyway. So we don't need to do any rounding there because it's already at two decimal places. Part B says 1.678 divided by 0 0.42. So if we put that into our calculator, you'll get 3.995238 and so on. And rounding that to two decimal places will give us 4.00. Part C says 81.04 times 0 0.010. And if we put that into our calculator, you'll get 0 0.8104, which rounds to 0 0.81. Part D says 4,278 divided by 1.006, which if you put into your calculator, should give you 4,252.485089. So if we round that to two decimal places, it becomes 4252.49. And lastly, part E says 43.678 times 64.1, and if we put that into our calculator, you should get 2,799.7598. And if we round that to two decimal places, then we should get 2799.76. Next, we're going to practice using the times 10 to the x or the exp button. And remember, this depends on which calculator you have. So check which button you're going to be using before we move on. Now, question one says to enter the following numbers in scientific notation into your calculator and write down what you see on the display. Note the button you use will depend on the model of calculator you have. So for part A, 1.5 times 10 to the 4, you're going to input that into your calculator and if you do that, you should get 15,000. Part B is 3 times 10 to the 8 and if you put that into your calculator in scientific notation, it should give you 300 million. Part C says 1.4 times 10 to the 6, so if you put that into your calculator, you should get 1,400,000. Part D says 9.99 times 10 to the 10, but if you put that into your calculator, it will actually just output the same thing. And same for part E, if we put 7 times 10 to the 15 into your calculator, it will just spit back out the same thing. The reason for this is the numbers are too large to fit on your display on your calculator, so they're just going to appear in scientific notation again. Question 2 says to use a calculator to attempt the following and write down your answers. You'll notice these questions have brackets used in them, and it can be useful to actually use the brackets when you're inputting numbers into your calculator. That way you don't need to worry about the bod mass rule or anything like that, because your calculator is going to know to do the parts and brackets separately. So input in for part A, 3 times 10 to the 5 times 5 times 10 to the 7 into your calculator, you should get an answer of 1.5 times 10 to the power of 13. For part B, 4.98 times 10 to the power of 21 divided by 3.23 times 10 to the 3. If you do that, we should get 1.54 times 10 to the power of 18. For part C, if you do 2.0 times 10 to the minus 9 times 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3 in your calculator, we should get 
6.8 times 10 to the power of minus 12. For part D, if you do 6.66 times 10 to the minus 66 divided by 7.77 times 10 to the minus 2, you should get an answer of 8.57 times 10 to the power of minus 65. Part E says 3.45 times 10 to the minus 6 times 5.67 times 10 to the 9. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get 19561.5. And lastly, part F, 7.67 times 10 to the power of 12 divided by 3.2 times 10 to the minus 9. If you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 2.40 times 10 to the power of 21. That's it for this video guys, I hope you found the examples on using your calculator effectively useful and if you haven't already done so, make sure you like the video or subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.